Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Confessions, episode 2, with your host, Yugi no no yes, yes, maybe, maybe, perhaps, perhaps, sometimes, sometimes, on occasion, on occasion, or as the kids call me, Yugi Jesus, just for short. Yeah, I said in the first episode I probably wouldn't be wearing the full Yugi Jesus garb. You know, I just had to do it for the first episode to make it official. I might still need to power up here and there, because, you know, I might need the extra help. I might need to power up to be able to deal with some of these more, uh, complex or, you know, malevolent sins or whatever. But other than that, I think I'm gonna stick with the regular Yugi no no Yugi Jesus look, you know? It's a lot more comfortable, let me tell you. If you guys want to send me your Yu-Gi-Oh! Sins of Confessions, then go ahead and leave them in my Discord server. I, I stay out of that channel so I can give my genuine reactions, and I'm gonna be doing that here in a minute. I have not seen any of the confessions in, my, in that Discord channel. I have not. I'm going to get to those in just one minute. First, I'm going to be addressing the comments left on Yu-Gi-Oh! Confessions Part 1. <laughs> I'm going to be addressing some of these. Um, you know, I've seen them, so my reactions... I mean, I haven't seen them in days, though, so my, my reaction is going to be genuine, you know, but you get it. It's not going to be as genuine as the uh, Confessions chat channel in my Discord server because I have not been in there. Truthfully, honestly, I, I stay out of there. I go in my general chat, say hi to people. I stay the hell out of the Confessions chat so I give my genuine reactions. So we're gonna be doing that in just one minute. First up, let's go over these comments. Confession, I used to run a chain burn deck. Yeah, that's that's bad enough on its own, isn't it? <laughs> that was primarily made to piss people off. It's even worse, I typically wouldn't win, but just the look just the look on my opponent's faces when I nonchalantly get rid of their best cards was priceless. Dude, you're evil. I also remember winning using Battle Vader as my opponent decked out. Edit. Looked at the ban list just now, and who is who in the right mind put ceasefire at three? Like, what? Dude, you are way behind. You are way behind. I'm I'm glad that you am I glad that you wanna duel with Battle Fader and just Battle Fader by decking out? I was about to say that I'm glad that that happened for you, but now, I'm, uh, is, is that a, is that something to be glad over? I'm not sure, I guess I guess I could be glad over. <laughs> Here's my Yugi Tube Confession Booth Confession. Yugi Tube Confession Booth Confession. I haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh since 2007, but still shamelessly watch Yu-Gi-Oh content. Well, it's because me and a few other people make the best shit. That's why, that's why, you know? <laughs> Now, here's one I for sure saw because the localized tornado thing cracked me up, oh my gosh. My Yu-Gi-Oh! sin was that in the early days, I took my stall deck to tournaments. A stall deck, okay? It had no win condition. <laughs> no, he acknowledges it had no win con. And I ran three copies of localized tornado. <laughs> <laughs> Look like Tornado gets rid of your own stuff, guys. <laughs> it's, 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 I don't even, it's one of those cards where you wonder why they even made it. It's, it's one of those. I think I actually might have it in one of my worst Yu-Gi-Oh cards ever made videos. I'm pretty sure. My time decisions would be decided in the first round of the duel. In the first round. Yeah, no one liked me. Well, I, can you blame him? Like, <laughs> imagine trying to sit and play Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, you actually going to a tournament, you know, you paid your entry and everything, you sit down, and the person across from you is not even trying, and they're playing three copies of localized tornado. <laughs> like, I mean, like, that's, that's pretty rough, that's pretty rough, but at the same time, though, if your deck is that bad to where you're losing, or you know, timing out to three copies of Localized Tornado. You might be playing Black Wings. <laughs> There's a lot of comments on here, guys. Uh, but, you know, that's not the rules. I'm just reading some of these because I did think some of these were funny. This one's my favorite one. I'm just going to read it, and then we're going to go to the Discord confessions that I haven't seen yet. But I'm just going to put my sin here. When I was a kid, I would laminate my decks with packing tape instead of buying sleeves. And then I'm carrying it around in my pocket. Yeah, that is some intense Eugene shit. That is, I, you know what? Eugene might have done that before. I don't. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like, that is a really clever idea. It really is. It really is. You never have to sleep your deck again. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you just covered your cards with tape. You're never gonna sell them, <laughs> you know. Like you're never gonna sell them. Ugh, that's, that's that's such a genius idea. It's such a Eugene idea, though. It's like, dude, ugh, I don't know how to feel about that. I don't know how to feel about that. I think it's a really cool kid memory right there, but at the same time, it's like, don't 
taped your cards. Don't do that. Don't. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those that'll make, you know, your hardcore collectors cringe, you know, and like want to shed their skin. Yeah, that's, that's one of those. <laughs> for sure, for sure. All right. Got the Discord server open. Going to confessions. All right, I gotta scroll up. Uh, I gotta find where I left off last time. One minute. All right, the first one of this. I actually just posted a meme like this, <laughs> like just today. I really did. I really did. I once was in a tournament at a friend's house, and all eight of us ended up dropping everything and abandoning the tournament <laughs> because we wanted Chinese food, and the Chinese restaurant down the street was about to close. <laughs> That, that happens sometimes. I mean, if you guys are, are all doing bad in the tournament, you're all doing bad. You might as well just cut your losses, go play goats, go get some food. Yeah, like, why not, you know? Over the last year, I've had more fun doing test hands and EDO Pro than actually playing the game. I would call that a sin if it wasn't so damn true. <laughs> like, for real. Forgive me, Lord No No, for I have sinned. I closed the project in this tab whenever my opponent plays Super Broken and hides your decks. Oh, man. And then, and then the very next comment is the crap that we would do, you know, that everybody's done before they had the test hand feature. It's just like you would just play and, you know, and if they didn't let you go first or whatever, <laughs> you know, so you could test, you just quit and get another match. Yeah. Ooh, rough days, rough days. We've all done it. We've all been guilty of it. I know I've done it where I just want to test hands, and this was once again before the test hand feature. And, you know, I just wanted to test hands, and I was just like quitting on people. Just next match, next match. I've done that crap. I've done that crap. We've all done that crap. You just want to test your deck. You might not necessarily have the cards in real life to sit here and like, you know, play test your own hands. So before the test hand feature in EDO Pro, it was rough. It was, you know, it was the Wild West a little bit. He finishes though by saying, I just want to draw cards with Draw Lords, Dark Lords. <laughs> So I looked my friend in the eye and ripped up a first edition Blue Eyes he got off eBay because I thought it was fake. It was not. That is a sin, boy. That is, are we, talk, are we talking first ed L-O-B? Are we talking first ed L-O-B Blue Eyes here? That is, yeah. Whew, that's my favorite one, that art, the L.O.B. art's my favorite Blue Eyes art, too. I don't know if I'm gonna, ugh, all right. I know I have to forgive these, but the, that one's kind of hard, you know? Like, okay, Kaiba, just rip up the fourth Blue Eyes. Dick, <laughs> like, okay, okay, Weevil, just, you know, <laughs> just like, throw the Exodia overboard, okay. <laughs> just like, you know. <laughs> Uh, I also accidentally finessed Walmart out of an entire display of maximum gold for the price of one box. Nearly tripled my money because I pulled a playset of Golden Lords and an Impering, among other things. And you know what? I have, I, I was, I, I didn't do it, but I was with somebody who did do that and did get a whole display of one of the golds. And I don't remember which gold it was for the price of one box of gold. That was a uh, notorious thing. I'm actually glad you got away with that. Uh, a lot of people got away with that. And if you guys are like, oh, that's a sin, you know? Well, Walmart's... Stealing's wrong, okay? <laughs> I don't know what to say. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. Every time I was faced with Max C in the past, I always took the Max C challenge, and it always came back to bite me. Yeah, if you guys do not know what Max C is, Max C is a card that says you draw every time your opponent special summons. So it's like a hand trap that you, so your opponent, like, basically coaxing your opponent to not special summon as much, but if your opponent's just got a bang in hand, they're gonna special summon and just keep going and going and going and going, especially if they're playing some sort of synchro combo deck, they're gonna, they're gonna keep comboing until you deck out. That's, yeah, that's, that's a thing. Yeah, the max, that's what the maxi challenge is. Like, I, I'm gonna not deck myself out by drawing before you finish your combo. That's, that, that was the maxi challenge. Here's another one from my admin, Ren. He posted one in the last episode. One time, a regular at my locals brought his son to play. They were maybe nine or 10 years old, and I played against him. He was playing Blue Eyes, and I was playing Trickstar, so I drawled. <laughs> I troll me and card, yeah. And OTK'd him two games in a row. It took maybe five minutes. If you don't if you don't count the time it took me to explain why he no longer has a hand. <laughs> that is brutal. Nineteen years old and he drove me and card then. Apparently too old. Two games in a row, just draw we and card, you win. Yeah, like Trick Stars, playing Trick Stars at full power was a sin. It was a sin because it was a weeby deck. It was a sin because it's an easy deck to win with. It's, you know, it's a sin for a lot of different reasons. Although the deck's not the worst. It's not my least favorite deck of all time. It's just one of those decks that was really annoying to deal with. And if you do still happen to come across it, 
it can be really annoying to this day, even though it is not as good as it used to be, especially with only one light stage. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned! I told Eugene he was good at Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, here's the thing. Eugene is... I, I don't know how, but he's never been defeated. So, like... <laughs> Say what you will, but I don't think he's ever lost. I, I don't think he's ever lost, so... And I'm not gonna talk too loud either, you'll fucking bust in here. And then this guy comments, I'll do you one better. I told myself I was good at you. <laughs> ah! That is rough. You know what, dude? We've all told ourselves we were good at Yu-Gi-Oh at one point or another, you know? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, all of us, all of us, you know, we, 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 we've all done that. It's a never-ending puzzle game. Do you think that you've mastered a never-ending puzzle game when it never ends? And you think you... You got good, you never mastered it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. When X-Sabers were in their prime, I countered them and won the local tournament with Final Countdown Stall. That is, that's rough. I mean, uh, Final Countdown is a, and now I assume that it was at three at the time. That's a trolley card. And that's a card that actually still sees play to this day. Um, in uh, Mystic Mind, people will play one Final Countdown in Mystic Mind because they'll stall out and win because it's the Final Countdown. You know, whatever. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. I played True Draco against kids. Defeated them and made a motto saying, if Guru can get, if Guru can do it, so can we. Oh, that is rude. <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. I use Cyber Elton on a. You use Cyber Elton? In? You're already forgiven. <laughs> like, anyways. <laughs> you use Cyber Elton on a player at locals, and he wiped his entire board, not just his monsters, and I didn't correct him. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, guys, if you don't know what Cyber Elton does, uh, you banish uh, all all your light machine monsters from your field and in your graveyard, if I remember correctly, and then it sends. It, that's what that's a summoning condition. And then when it hits the field, it sends all monst all other monsters on the field. It doesn't destroy it. it; sends them all to the graveyard. Okay, uh, it comes in handy for uh, monsters that can't be destroyed by card effects and stuff because it's not being destroyed by a card effect; it's being sent by a card effect. So it's a card that you know has come in handy throughout the years. This guy, apparently, this kid that he used uh, Elton and on wiped his back row too and thought it was a, a feather duster as well. And it is not. It is not a feather duster as well. For the next video, should it come? A bit embarrassing on my side. Should it come? What are you talking about? I'm making it right now. I mean, I, I, should, I should smite you. I got extra petty. <laughs> like, tell, tell me about it. You got extra petty? I'm getting petty right now. I'm just kidding. I got extra petty and salty after losing to my brother. Ooh, yeah, that'll happen. He was playing Time Thief Raid Raptor. I was playing either Budget Shadal Invoked or PK Fire. It was in a public setting and I felt extremely guilty afterwards. Ooh, it took a month break from the game to avoid getting that toxic again. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, that's something that I've even fallen victim to, guys. Taking the game too seriously and getting that nasty. And you feel like a total fucking fool after. Because you, it's it's a stupid kids card game. That is why I'm always on here preaching. Don't take it seriously. You're really weird if you do, because you are in fact weird and sad if you do take it that seriously to the point of, I don't know, being mean to kids, uh, being mean to your own brother right here, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, like uh, Yu-Gi-Oh can be a very covetous game, and uh, you can acknowledge that, and I don't know, not play into it. Or you can, I don't know, be a weird man-child forever. Yeah, uh, I'm glad I'm glad you took a break, though, dude. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, yeah, that'll definitely uh, fix it. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I unironically say Naibu-woo. <laughs> like, uwu. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I wasn't playing against friends. That one's rough, man. I, like, for that, believe it or not, that one right there makes me want to power up and break out the full garb already. <laughs> like, yeah, that one right there. Just, that's, mm, don't, just don't do it no more, okay? <laughs> just don't do it no more. Forgive me, Yu-Gi-Oh! Jesus, I opened a pack just for the rapper. And rapper's spelled wrong, <laughs> but still, he opened a pack just for the rapper. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily a sin. I mean, it's just kind of 
I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what you'd call that. Forgive me, Yuki. No, no, I have sinned. I tribute summons Nibiru, and it won me the game. Oh, that's nice. I actually thought about to. And I, you could actually main deck Nibiru in Monarchs if Monarchs didn't break so much, or you could, you know, at least side it. And uh, it would actually be really good in Monarchs because, you know, uh, between Dragonoid Generator, I don't know, the traps that summon themselves, you'd have plenty of material to just hard summon Nibiru if you bricked with it, you know? So, and it's got 3,000 attack. Yeah, it's got 3,000 attack, so. That's, that's not a sin, that's just, uh, that's just cool. I've come to confess to Yugi Jesus, those Herald deck lists were not very hype in my opinion. They did not in LG. All Heralds, all Heralds are hype. You go first, you win. What's not hype about that? If you're playing a Herald deck and you win the die roll, you won. That, what's more hype than that? Hand traps? Summon Herald first. Fuck them. What are they gonna do? Hand trap you when you have a Herald? Dick? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi Nono, for I have sinned. I have been making sacrifices for a total of four years for the creation of an Archfiend Tuner monster. <laughs> Why do they need a tuner? Who plays Archfiends? Who are you? <laughs> like what? I was sacrificing cyber dragons and larvae monsters. No, dude, that that is a sin. You send me the cyber dragons and larvae moths. The larvae moths go in my personal collection where I hoard them all and don't let anybody have any. And then the cyber dragons I keep to sign and give out to people because I'm nice. But you can't have any larvae moths because I'm not nice. But I'm nice. Just. Why do why do arch fiends need a tuner? <laughs> like, I'm, just, I'm just like thinking about that. Like what? Look, like, what are you even playing? <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I've sinned. Oh, I know this guy. He's always asking for uh, Jerry Bean support. <laughs> Back when I was younger, before my twenties, I hated Cyber Dragons. Well, how dare you? But I changed my ways later once I played the deck. I mean, that's usually how it is with any deck. You know, you you, you hate it till you try it, and then as it is with a lot of things in life, you know, for whatever reason, people don't you know learn from that. People are weird. Anyways, also, this may be considered a sin as well, but I think Silent Magician is way hotter waifu than Dark Magician Girl! <laughs> There's like people pointing up and stuff. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> that, that is kind of a sin, because Dark Magician Girl is Dark Magician Girl, bro. Like, uh, hold, hold on, hold on, one second. Where's, where's, hold, one minute. Just look at this. Just look at her. That's not that's not your waifu, huh? That's that's not. I don't know, man. You might you might want to see if you like dudes now or something. <laughs> Forgive me, Yuki Jesus, for I have sinned. I run Helosaurus in my domain Monarch build. What's what is, what is Helosaurus? Do I know that card? What even is that card? Helosaurus Yu-Gi-Oh. I know this card. This is a really old card. You can special summon this card from your hand. When you do, your opponent can target one monster in their graveyard. Your opponent special summons that target to their side of. The this is shitty, this is shittier Dynatherium. Uh, 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 you know, there's, you know, you can play all the Burning Abyss monsters and they summon themselves, right? And, and have other effects too. Just, they just, and there's, you know, your opponent doesn't get the special summon. There's better cards, man. There's better cards, all right? I have been attacked for game by a hard summoned Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. That's not a sin. Some, that's. I mean, I would like to lose a duel that way. That'd be just. Re, that'd be really cool. Lose the blue eyes. Old, I, I can't tell you the last time I've seen that card summoned. <laughs> like what? I was in sixth grade, and me and other people would play Yu-Gi-Oh in the library before school starts. Fair enough. I usually played Raid Raptors, which was really good because the monster had mass destruction effects. Yeah, the monsters had mass destruction effects or could attack all monsters, but it's hard to do that when you're facing down six other players that have Mirror Force. So you guys are all like, oh, like either you're playing one-on-one -on -one and they're all playing Mirror Force, so you guys are all dueling at the same time and they all, all had Mirror Force. Either way, though. Anyways, my board got cleared and my biggest rival at the time finished me with Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. I have nothing but respect for that man. And I have nothing but respect for you for admitting that you have nothing but respect for that guy for owning you a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon that never gets fucking summoned ever. Good job, dude. <laughs> I made three copies of Toon World when I was first trying out tunes. Okay? Right. While playing on YGO Pro, so this is back in the day, 
As soon as I activated it, my first opponent replied, dude, Toon World is so bad, and then surrendered. I guess that means Toon World won me the duel, so joke's not that dweeb. <laughs> Awesome. You know what? Toon World's one of my favorite cards of all time. Not just because it's Toon World and you need it for tunes and Maximilian Pegasus displayed that in the show. It's not just for all those reasons, although those, those help. But um, Toon World is a very interesting card in the game. And it also, I love the art on, on the card and everything. But uh, Toon World's a very interesting card in the game because it's a card that you pay a thousand life points for. Right? It's a thousand, you pay 500? I can't remember. But you pay life points to activate it and then it just stays. I can't think of any other card in the game that's like that, where you pay life points to activate it and have it stay up just to stay up. I mean, there's field spells that you activate that you want to stay up that will give, I don't know, attack bonuses or, or, or something, but Toon World does nothing but be Toon World. Making it probably the most unique card in the game, one of them, seriously. It's one of my favorite cards for that reason, it's very, very unique. And it's one of the more nostalgic cards of all time. It's Dune World, you know? It's awesome. Uh, Yugi Boy, Maximilian Pegasus! <laughs> I don't know if this counts as a sin, but I almost got into a fist fight with some dudes who stole my friend's binder at a regional. It shouldn't have been. The sin is that it was an almost. You should have just done it. If you fear consequences, not gonna get far. Consequences only apply to you if you let them apply to you, bro. It's something you're gonna have to learn. Anyways, people are gonna be like, whoa, 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 and just be alive a little longer, you'll get there. <laughs> but I guess that's a really good uh, time for me to make a Yu-Gi-Oh! confession. I haven't made one this episode yet. Um, I had a card stolen from me, and this was during Necros format, and it was an Exabeetle. I think it's called Exabeetle. Um, I had an ultimate version of it, I just already had it. Some dude, I, I, I kind of remember, I don't even remember what he looks like, I kind of do, uh, but like, anyways. Um, I know who did it. I know who stole the card. I told, his, I told his friends that if he ever showed up again, I was gonna kick his teeth in and I meant it. Never saw him or his friends again. Again. Never in the shop. Ever, ever again. It would have happened. I would have kicked his teeth in. <laughs> so, like, yeah. And, uh, over Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and that's rough. I probably wouldn't do that these days. But at that time... Oh yeah, I was, I was pissed. <laughs> so, forgive me, Yugi Jesus, I have sinned. Is it bad that I play, that I enjoy playing Mystic Mind Burn to punish the wicked meta sheep? <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, that's not, I actually, yeah, I guess this could be another confession from me, you know, just back to back or whatever. I like Mystic Mind. I'm sorry, I like it. I like it, I don't know, getting booed, boo, you know? I, I like it just fine, you know? It's just another anti-meta deck. That's, that's it, you know, and it loses the back row destruction. I mean, it's an easy deck to beat. It truly is. Just, it, anyways, like, I, I, but I also get the frustrations of, of actually trying to get a good match in, learning, you know, all these different interactions in the current metagame, and then someone's just like, mine, you can't play. And you don't, you know, and a lot of people, depending on the format, won't play back row destruction, like, at all, at all, you know, depending on the format. So, like, I, I can see where it'd be rough. I can see where it could be a sin, but honestly, it's it's not a sin. And actually, the next comment is, no, that's not a sin. Fuck them up. <laughs> so I, yeah, there's other people that agree with me. I enjoy making meta players surrender with aroma and one card wonder decks. Is that a sin or just a lust for revenge? I think it's more of like a passion for lesser known win conditions and decks and stuff. And that's and that's just cool because someone's got to play them. Otherwise, the rest of us are just are never going to know about them. I mean, we'll, we might remember certain cards when we first open packs or like when a set first comes out. But let's be real. Do you do you guys remember every single card from every single set that comes out? I know I don't, especially when they, since they started shitting them out every week. <laughs> so like, I, I, yeah, no, it's it's good. You know, there needs to be. Um, I I I've, I've always been in the middle here, where I'm like, yes, I want a well-defined meta game. I want everyone playing the same decks, same few decks, or I want the same few decks defined, so that you know, um, a true competitive, more poker-style format happens. I've I've always liked that more, but I also understand the other side where if they are going to be shitting out all these other cards and archetypes and ideas, they should be used, you know? <laughs> so I'm, I, I, I'm in the middle. I'm always in the middle, you know? I just, I see it. I see Yu-Gi-Oh for what it is. That, that's it. Forgive me, Yu-Gi Jesus, but when I took my 13-year-old cousin to his first locals, I let him use my Dark Warrior FTK. He went three and one. That was just really nice. That's not a sin. That's really nice. You know, and it's first time playing, first time going to, to a locals, and you uh, let them just whoop up on some people. That's badass. Uh, my first uh, 
First time I went to locals, I got second, and it was with battling boxers because lead yoke. Badass card. Good luck getting rid of it back in the day. <laughs> so, uh, forgive me, Yuki Jesus, for I enjoy playing Dragoon Sub Terror. Dude, like, we, we got mine players and burning players in here, and you're, and you're worried about playing Sub Terror? You're fine, man. <laughs> you're fine. Forgive me, Yuki Jesus, I allowed my friend to win with his ninjas. What he didn't know was I had all five pieces of Exodia in hand for three turns. Parentheses, he just started playing. That is not a sin, that is a win, boy. You had Exodia, you had Exodia, the forbidden one in your hand, and you still let your friend win? That is a, that is, that's awesome. That is, that is very, very nice. That, that's up there with, you know, Homeboy losing the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon earlier. That was, that was awesome. Forgive me, oh great Yugi Jesus. I played Crusadia Dragon Link against the 12 year, 12 year old playing Blue Eyes and proceeded to deck him out for fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus. My great sin is activating D Dimension Shifter nine times in a four round locals. That's actually pretty good. Dimension Shifter is a fantastic card. I actually like that card a lot, and it's a really good looking card as well. Embarrassingly, I had a huge crush on my Valentine growing up. She was my first ever waifu. <laughs> that dark magician girl, huh? Not, uh, so that's fine. That's fine. Not, 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 not Taya though. I don't know. For me, it might have been more Taya than Mai. But Mai, you know, she was she was dark. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I get it. And plus, uh, my my played harpies. You know, and harpies were a cool deck. So yeah, I, I can see it. I can see it. You know, respect, respect. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, but I love my Thelgrans more than any other deck, including Cyber Dragons. Man, didn't you get the memo? The Felgrand Structure deck was only blue eye support and it was under the guise of being a Felgrand Structure deck. Everybody knows that. You didn't get the memo, did you? <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. I play Black Wings. Okay, Eugene. Okay. <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi Jesus. I still play Trickstar. Man, people still do play that, I'm telling you. And have been waiting for Trickstar <laughs> for uh, FES for a while now. I actually don't know what that card is, but I hope you get it soon. Forgive me, for I have sinned. For one, I once cowboyed a true Draco Dino player in 2017. Both games, one and two, for exact game with 60 card Zombie Sworn. So exactly for game. So he's, he uh, like got 800, like exactly 800 damage twice. That's not a sin, that's a win, boy. Forgive me, Yuki Jesus, for I have sinned. I built my friend an alien deck for his birthday with every card either being French, German, Spanish, or Italian. He still doesn't know what any card says. <laughs> the more I think about that, that's hilarious. So not only is it an alien deck, so it's an obscure deck that builds counters and crap that no one's ever played or enjoyed playing or playing against or anything. So not only that, but it's a, he made it completely in foreign to where he is never going to learn it. <laughs> This is really, really funny. I once bought a couple of structure decks to keep my locker at work so me and a buddy could play on lunch. The first time we played, I took a bite out of a chicken strip and played with grease on my hand. I didn't sleep the decks. The decks were ancient gear and dinosaurs. That's pretty rough. Yeah, dude, that's gross, dude. No, that ruins the cards. That's up there with homeboy putting tape on his cards. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Forgive me, Yuki Jesus, for I have sinned. I was the one who devised the Jerry Beans Man creation and, and never once looked back. Now they got the, the power uh, plant the power of plants in their dark garden to take revenge upon the genocide you have committed <sighs> I know I've been expecting the return for a while I'm sorry for the plague I have brought upon you I also also I believe mind master to one can happen if a ban of brain research lab happens I forget what those cards do I forget what those cards do so maybe probably I'm not sure forgive me Yugi Jesus for I have sinned I won five out of eight rounds of a regional qualifier using cyber dragon deck with a 48 card main deck and it ended at just one spot below the cut for the invitational cutoff that sucks dude yeah that happened to me one time so I already had my invite several times in a in, you know this uh, particular season it was monarch format um, so I took Evil Swarms to a Tulsa Regional, bubbled with Evil Swarms, like bubbled, it bubbled. Uh, Asian Persuasion was there, and we were going to deck profile it and stuff because we thought I had made top 32. And it was insane because it was Evil Swarms, you know, it's like, what? No, I bubbled with it. So yeah, that crap, that crap happens. Forgive me, Yuki Jesus, for I have sinned. I have been willingly watching old Simu, old Simu banlist reaction videos. Ooh. That's rough, dude. Like, that is rough. If you're watching, like, old Yu-Gi-Oh! videos and they're not, like, educational ones and they're just, like, time period pieces, like, ban list videos, 
that is rough. And if you're not doing research into a format, that is just, it's kind of sad, man. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> man, that's rough. Forgive me, Yuki Jesus, for my friend has sinned. A few years ago, he sold a Chaos Neos with Rainbow Dragon as its name for $100. That is a well-known misprint worth a lot of money. Wow, I don't remember how much it's worth, but it is way more than that, all right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Forgive me, Yu-Gi-Oh! Jesus, for I have sinned. I have spent at least $100 on Code of the Duelist booster packs just to, just to get at least one Firewall Dragon back when it came out in the TCG. Didn't pull anything good! Ah, oh, yeah, well, that's not a sin that you did that. The sin is that you didn't ask me to bless your pulls first, or you would have pulled exactly what you wanted. That's your fault, you guys can message me anytime. That's your fault. <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. I used to bridge shuffle all oh, my, my cards in the goat days. Yeah, don't do that. You bend your cards and you can have like really valuable foils in there, you know? I have bent, yep, yep. I have bent first, yeah, first edition cards from Metal Raiders through Ancient Sanctuary because of this. That is a sin, boy. Go do some Hail Marys. <laughs> yeah, I have to confess one of my worst misplays. I actually summoned number 107 Tachyon Dragon, then tried to rank up into C107, completely forgetting that you need the appropriate rank up magic card to do so. That is a negligible sin. That is a more of a misplay, you know, like a... Something uh, more innocent. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, my most recent sin. When Firewall Dragon was banned, I removed it from my deck and, and into the card binder it went, and then proceeded to not check the ban list for many months to come. I just finally sold my Firewall Dragon at a card shop for 25 bucks, only to find out a week later it has been on ban for a long time. Rip, rip. Pulling that card from my first ever Code of the Duelist pack was the only reason I got back into Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, that's rough, bud, that's rough. Always check the ban list, guys. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, I once tried to steal a kid's cards in second grade by taking the tin from his bag. Boom, why? <sighs> Brought it into, into the bathroom, got the cards I wanted, put the tin in my pants to hide it, and put it, put the, oh my gosh, and put, the, put it back in his book bag. Ah, uh, ah, uh, that, that is bad, <laughs> that is so bad. Forgive me, Yu-Gi-Oh! Jesus, for one time when I was a kid, I held a 20-year-old hostage. How did you hold a 20 year old hostage when you were a kid? You were either a badass or they were a pussy. <laughs> Held them hostage by them having King Tiger Wanghu. And I had Ulti Treeborn Frog in Graveyard before the Errata continuously activating it to die, telling him to surrender. Oh, so King Tiger Wanghu destroys anything with less than 1400 attack? And what he's saying is Treeborn Frog loop. Uh, pre errata so yeah, so it was one of those things kind of like uh, the win con to flintlock is that you don't actually win You just keep gaining life points until your opponent has to give up kind of like the, the alternative win condition That's what he's uh, saying. He got his opponent into an alternate win can alternate win condition Lord Yuki Jesus forgive me I have sinned or maybe this isn't a sin but an act of kindness and humility Let's see at my locals. I reg regularly give cards to young kids for free anything to help them with their deck I've even scooped games early just to help some of those kids sitting next to me. I've done that crap too, man. I've done that crap too. That's just what you have to do. It's, it's just, I don't know. That's, that's what you should do. It's weird to me that people don't inherently know this kind of crap. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. I once got paired against a 10 year old that had no mat or sleeves at a regional and proceeded to pin to the left TK and oh, oh my gosh, twice in a row. So two owed a kid without a mat or sleeves, dude. You couldn't have given, you couldn't have like shared your mat, nothing, no, no. Oh, that's a sin, boy, that's a sin. <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. I was on a boat trip to some retarded island to play some card game when a spiky, oh my gosh, <laughs> I already know where this is going. When a spiky hair. <laughs> I got I got hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. I was on a boat trip to some retarded island to play some card game when a spiky haired boy walked to me and showed me his cards called Exodia something. All I knew is that he was trying to get me into some weird left leg porn. So I asked if I could see the cards, and when he gave them to me like an idiot, I threw them off the boat. I laughed and his dumbass friend jumped off the boat to get the cards. If you guys don't know, that is he's he's pretending that he's weevil. Weevil Underwood! <laughs> That's what, he, that's what he's trying to do. Uh, I don't know if that was my best Weevil, but I, I, I got the laugh down pretty well. Say goodbye to Azaria! <laughs> uh, 
That was way better. Yeah, he, he like that's that's he was impersonating. That's pretty funny. My local shop was going out of business, so they did triple event pricing for their last tournament. I was playing Evil Eye and went at the time in the last game. I was playing against the local stinky kid. Oof. And didn't play and, and didn't pay a maintenance cost, so he asked if I had to pay for something, and I said no. I won the match and got fourth in the tourney and ripped an ulti desires. Nice, a little bit of a sin, but if the kid don't shower, he don't shower, bro. <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. My locals knows me for doing full art cards and allow me to use them for tournaments with some conditions, of course, as long as the card text is the same and stuff, right? Some someone that's actually a question I get a lot is if, if you is if you can play signed cards in tournaments Absolutely, you, I just that's why I don't sign over the card text that's signed on the art But anyways someone new to our locals asked me to commission a miscellaneous a miscellaneous source for them So a four miscellaneous source I forgot to tell them that they are not playable even though all the necessary information was visible on the card Well, it depends on the on your local rules But in actual tournaments from my understanding as long as the card text is not impeded and as long as it, it as long as it is in fact a real Yu-Gi-Oh card a real TCG Yu-Gi-Oh card. That part's important because you can't play OCG cards. Um, as long as the text is not impeded and as long as it is in fact a real TCG card, uh, from, in my, from my knowledge, you can use it. So that's actually a little confusing for me. So he took it to another locals a week later and was given a match loss and asked to leave. He now plays at our locals with three, four misc to this day. Well, now only one because of the ban list rip. <laughs> right, 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 right. But yeah, um, so that's, I guess that would be like something to address with your local uh, card person let's, who's in charge of Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't know. Um, that, that'd, be, uh, yeah, that'd be something to address with your locals, like whoever's in charge of Yu-Gi-Oh. Because yeah, as long as it's a real card and as long as the text isn't impeded, covered up, or altered in any way, you can play that card. I have never ran into an issue before. So you might want to have a talk with them. Unless something has changed that I don't know about. I think, yeah, anyway, so that, that, that could, that's a possibility too, but I don't think so. I think that uh, Yu-Gi-Oh players and the uh, shop owners could be just, and by a little bit ridiculous, I mean a lot ridiculous. They can, they can be really ridiculous. When I was younger, I didn't have any friends to play Yu-Gi-Oh with, so I got my mom to learn how to play so she could play with my with me. My sin is that when I was teaching her, I taught her in a way that would make my dinosaur deck even better. <laughs> <laughs> her trap, so I, uh, so I would always win. Ugh, that's, that's mean. Although, your mom might have picked up on that and just let it happen, just so you know, you know what I'm saying? I have a confession to make. I use Guardian Angel Joan in my Cyber Dragon deck. She's a fairy, and I don't even remember what her effect is, but you don't even play her in fairy decks, so what the hell? As well as the Winged Dragon of Ra. Well, I mean, if you like those cards, you like those cards, man. Play what you want, just don't expect your deck to be the best deck for the format if you're playing cards that you know are your favorites and not objectively the best cards you could be playing. That's that's it. That's the, that's all I have to say about that. Damn, and here I was thinking I was weird for playing Helosaurus and Monarchs. Dude, no, you're still weird. <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi Jesus, for I have sinned. When I was a kid, I played with Yu-Gi-Oh cards without sleeves, and the cards would always get cruddy and damaged, especially the quarters. Well, no shit, yeah. <laughs> and well, then again, when I was a kid, I you know, and, and I was just, collecting whatever, whatever cards I could just get lucky to find on the playground, you know, or whatnot, you know, it would get traded, you know, two from my friends, like, or whatever Yu-Gi-Oh cards I could find, because I wasn't allowed to play Yu-Gi-Oh, you know what I mean? So I, like, had to scrounge for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Back in those days, I didn't have sleeves either, so I, I don't really blame you. And being a stupid nine-year-old, I thought the best way to fix it was to cut the corners off the cards with scissors. Okay, I never did that one. Yeah, I never did that one. Wow. Forgive me, Yugi No No. That might be the last one, guys. There's one more. I don't know if we're going to top that. Cutting the cards up with scissors. Dude, that's something to do if you don't like your cards. Like, dang. Forgive me, Yugi No No, for I have sinned. <laughs> this guy's all official. I have sinned. <laughs> He's all proper. I was playing Predator Plants versus Exodia, and they dumped a limb in the graveyard. On my turn, I used Monster Aboard to summon the limb to my field and banished it with Chimera Flasia. All right, all right, all right, all right. That'll be the last one, and that is the last one in the Confessions channel, and that's a good one to end on. If you get rid of the Exodia limbs when they're at one, and someone's Wincon is getting Exodia in their hand, 
yeah, that's brutal. You like you summon you summon Exodia so they don't have it. You uh, you know uh, caught by the grave. It anything, just get it get it out. They they can't they can't uh, you know reach the win condition. And I really don't know anybody who takes Exodia seriously as a win condition. There's only been like one format I can think of in history where Exodia was or two where Exodia was viable. Like there's not very many. There hasn't been very many formats where Exodia is vi viable. Um, people were playing Exodia in Monarch format because of all the draw cards and stuff. People were playing Exodia. I've seen Ignite Exodia. I've seen all kinds of di different Exodia decks. They're not good. <laughs> like, they're, they've never been good. Um, they, even going back to the beginning of the game, let's go all the way back to 2002 format, the original. Let's go back to LOB, started at Kaiba, starter deck Yugi. Okay? It, Exodia is not even good then. <laughs> like it's not even good then. The reason why is because uh, card destruction is a card. So if you have Exodia in your hand and they activate card destruction, you lose all your pieces and you're fucked. That's it. So even going back to the beginning of the trading card game in the United States, Exodia was never good. Ever, 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 ever. Not, not to talk shit about Exodia because Exodia is the forbidden one. You know, he's legendary in Yu-Gi-Oh. I still love Exodia. It's nostalgic. It's you know, it's from the show. Everything else, you know, all that good stuff. All that good stuff. But as far as playing it in a tournament and trying to win that tournament, unless you get extremely lucky, I mean, and I mean the lucky, unless you, you have to be the luckiest person on this earth. And even then you're probably still gonna lose. <laughs> I want to thank all of you guys for leaving me all of these great sins and confessions. They're a lot of fun. Um, if you guys want to leave, you know, your comments down below of this video, I might read some of them in the next one, but I really want everything to be in that Yu-Gi-Oh! Confessions channel on my Discord server because I stay out of it, and it, that allows me to have, you know, to give you guys genuine reactions um, like I just did and like I did in the last episode. I stay out of that text channel on my Discord server so that I'm just completely surprised when I go to record these. And that's it. That's it. That's all I really wanted to say. Go ahead and leave me some more sins to review. I will review them, you know, forgive them and whatnot. Next week, speaking of which, your sins are all forgiven, guys. All forgiven. All right? As long as you dick slap that like button and subscribe. It's very important. You have to dick slap the like button and subscribe. And then you're, it's all forgiven. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> leave me some juicier ones, guys. Leave me some juicier ones. I didn't even have to break out the costume. Didn't have to break out the garb. I fear the day where I have to again, though. Man, there's going to be some nasty ones in the future, I'm sure. <sighs> Dick slap. Subscribe! <laughs>